First, I want to say this is a, a terrific film with incredible performances. I am definitely looking forward to talking to you about it. But I have to ask, once you were ready to make your feature debut as a writer and director, knowing that you'd have to dedicate all this time to it, did you ever consider lighter fare the first time around? Was it always this film and this story that you felt compelled to tell? Hey, that you know, it's funny. I had no idea what I was getting into. I had no idea. Um, I was so naive as an actor. I mean, I've told this story. I at the rap party, you know, as an actor, that's it. You know, you're done and you go home and you maybe do some ADR. And, I don't know. Occasionally, I guess there's reshoots, but you're basically it. And then you get to go to you know, hopefully some premiere later and celebrate. And, so I, I was I was crying. I was so emotional, you know, people wanted me to you know give a toast or a speech and I was so emotional. The next day I was driving around Sun Valley in the mountains, like just holding back tea. I was just a mess and um I had accomplished nothing. Like I'd done nothing. You know what I mean? I I, I now I talk to directors and you know, they say, Oh yeah, principal of photography is a vacation. You know, that's 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 a that's a joke. That's a vacation. That's fun. Um, everything starts happening and post. And so uh, I look, it has been a it has been a lot. It's been emotional. It was emotional writing it. It was emotional making it. And it's emotional talking about it. Um, I, but I had no choice. I mean, I, 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 I this thing took over my life. I mean, I didn't I didn't start doing the research because I wanted to make a movie. I, I started reading about these things because I was upset, you know, because I, I felt like I needed to know more and I was scared and I was frustrated or angry and I just needed to know. So there was never any question about having to do this work. I just I did not know how much it entailed um, as, you know, writer, producer, director. Uh, you know everything. You know, I'm I'm the production company. You know I'm just I'm I'm just overwhelmed. But I I you know it's also a, it's also sort of a dream come true. You know and and now that audiences are responding to it, I'm I'm just you know I just feels like I have more work to do. But I could think of nothing nothing better. You know. It seems like there are just there's an endless list of things that could have gone wrong with this. Yeah. I mean you're telling a story that's so emotional that could have been so just it could have ended up being unwatchable just because it would have been so hard to watch and yet somehow you are compelled to watch these people's story and you're telling really just a story with conversations and you're mostly in just one room i mean all of those things could have gone bad at every turn <laughs> when did you realize it was actually all working and that it was a compelling story yeah we well, you know, I got I got good feedback, right, from the script. Um, I think, like, I think, look, I tried to treat the conversation. I tried to treat these these as four equal parties, four four equal human beings, real human beings. There was no good or bad. There was no antagonist or protagonist. There was a kind of equivalence, you know, and a kind of I I, I treated them as I wanted their humanity and I wanted them to have dignity. Um, and so I think that was important from the very first step that I wasn't trying to say this person's at fault. This person did this thing where and these characters are going to find it out so they can blame them. It's about the complexity of being a human being and the mistakes we make, the tragic mistakes we make or the things we miss because we love unconditionally, you know, because, you know, we love our children so much we make mistakes <laughs> and uh, that felt truthful. And when I did this research, you know, and read about these things, that's what I, that's what I read about. You know, I didn't, I rarely, I can't have any, you know, very rarely read about parents that were monsters, you know, or parents that, you know, you're so conspicuously bad. It, 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 that's just not what I've found. And so I think that starting from that point, I think helped the script and I got good feedback. I was, I was open. I wanted notes. I wanted to change things. I, I, you know, I didn't have any experience, so I didn't, I don't think I had a big ego about it. I just, I just wanted it to be better. Um, and then when I got the actors, you know, I wanted, we had a two and a half day rehearsal and they, we sat at a table to do table work, which was basically dissecting the script and making sure it all worked. 
So we were getting a lot of good work done there because I needed to make sure the words were there so they could take these emotional journeys, that they, it would, that the words would carry them to these emotional places. Because the, the four actors are better actors than I am, and I wasn't about to sit there telling them how you, how you be emotional. We, they know how to do that. It was just about making sure that the journey was there. But the other thing we were doing is Ryan Jackson Healy, my cinematographer, he was there with a, a, a camera. We had our Alexa Mini and we had lenses. We had the camera we were going to shoot with. And he moved around the table to sort of help us understand our shot list in between the rehearsal and the shoot. You know, we wanted to, it was a camera test. And we went back a couple of days later, you know, and Ryan gave me the, sent me the footage and I saw it. I saw, I saw, I saw the movie. You know, I could see it. You know, we, we obviously weren't at yet in Idaho, but I saw these actors playing with each other and reading these lines. And I knew, I knew, I knew it was going to work. You know, did you make a conscious decision from the beginning not to be in the first film that you did as a writer and director? I mean, did you intentionally not want to direct yourself, or was there? Did it just not feel like there was a role for you yeah, in this? Story? Listen, it was never conscious. I mean, in the sense that you know, I I wrote that opening first. I mean, I wrote that in one sitting because I wanted. I love this idea of people helping people, and I love the misdirection of not knowing where this was going. I, I really believe if the movie was just the four parents the audience would connect with it differently that that it would be it would it would be a movie if that makes sense you'd get to sit down you get to watch this you'd meet these people it's fiction and you could be safely disconnected from it safely detached so and and i worried that you would not be as empathetic you would not be as affected you would not be as engaged and connected to these people and if you just met them on their own so if i introduced them through these three supporting characters that that feel like they're from another movie. That um, there's almost a comedic element. There's sort of you, we get to laugh at a few jokes, kind of lean in, wondering what is this? What are we seeing? That by the time the parents arrive, the audience can be blindsided by what's what's what the movie is really about. And I, I thought that that, that I, I'm not sure how to explain this, but I just believe that that would connect us in a in a more uh, intense way with the story that the, the the empathy would be greater that our connection would be more profound if we did not see it coming you know if we we learned about this in this sort of organic you know kind of um you know sort of sort of odd kind of kind of way um uh but yeah no, no i you know i i wrote those supporting parts then and right you know apart from me and then the parents you know i i I felt like I, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite there yet, but <laughs> I, I never, I never thought about it. I never consciously thought about it one way or the other. There just wasn't a part for me. I, um, I don't know. I don't really at the moment have any interest in directing anything that I'm in. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, it, it, I feel like I want to just tell a story that's in my head and have a deep emotional connection with it. And at the moment, acting placing myself in a role i feel like would muddle um would would uh would be a distraction in that relationship if that makes sense yeah no it's just interesting because I, I talk to a lot of actors who direct and some are totally okay with directing themselves and others never want to direct themselves there doesn't really seem to be a in between <laughs> Yeah, funny, interesting. Well, I mean, I will say, I want to, I want to make another movie just simply to see if I can improve on the mistakes that I made, and just I feel like this is having a success, and I feel like I, I need to, I need to do another one just because of that. Um, uh, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I, yeah, it was certainly not like I have no desire to like go, you know, play and direct Hamlet. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to those guys that did. I think mean, it's awesome. You know, I think it's great. I'm a big Kenneth Branagh fan. Mel yeah. Gibson, great. You know, go 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 for it. <laughs> did you always know that you wanted to take this journey to a place of redemption and forgiveness, or would you have been okay if it never got to that point if it didn't feel right? Well, yeah, I, you know, I wanted to believe in those ideas because I I didn't know if I was capable of them. You know, I. The genesis is kind of of the film is it, the literal catalyst was the, the Parkland shooting because I was a parent for that time. It was the first sort of major high profile 
mass shooting that I that I had with when I had a child, and um, it affected me uh, so differently. And I was overwhelmed, and I started doing this re- reading about it. Um, but when I came across these meetings, the connection I made was with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa, which when I learned about that in college, I was deeply disturbed by it because I did not think I could do it. I did not think I could forgive someone who took a, a loved one or a family member for, from me. I, 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 it terrified me because what that meant is that I would be living a life of hate and blame forever you know, that I'd be stuck, I'd be stuck with that pain and that resentment and hatred. And it's, that's a, that's a terrifying thing to think about. And I had to confront those feelings again, when I, when these, when this Parkland shooting happened, because I was a parent and I started to worry about my child and the country she was going to grow up into. And I thought about these things again. And so it wasn't, um, I wanted to know, I didn't know how I was going to get there necessarily. You know, I read a lot about the amnesty hearings in the South Africa, and there's not, there's not a whole lot to read about these meetings in, in the wake of shootings here. Obviously, they're private, they're painful, they're extremely sensitive. It's not as if you get some transcript. There's little details you get here and there that, you know, people have been open enough to share. Um but I tried to sort of construct one. But like I said, you know, I was coming at it from having these people all be inherently good human beings. So I didn't know how we were going to get there. But I, I was curious. I was, I was interested in the idea that forgiveness doesn't benefit all the parties equally. You know, and maybe there's even a transactional quality to it that I get to forgive you and feel better about myself. But what does that, what does that mean for you? You know, and I, I wanted to explore that. Because I, I just didn't know, I didn't know how any of this stuff worked, but I, I felt like I needed to. I felt like I desperately wanted to believe in reconciliation and forgiveness, but I just didn't know how to get there. So that's, I mean, that is what the movie is. It's, I mean, it's very personal in the sense that I, I'm working through this myself but in, yeah. uh, in, and, you know, with these four characters is sort of, you know, my proxy. I just thought that moment was so interesting. I, I have watched... The Redemption Project, which is a show that Van Jones did where, you know, the victim or their family and perpetrators sit down across from each other and have a conversation. And those episodes were so interesting because it never was, you know, no one episode turned out the same way. Mm -hmm. Some people forgave, some didn't, some thought they weren't going to and did. It just, it was so interesting. And, And this felt so just natural, which I thought was interesting because, I mean, obviously you have a script, but it didn't feel like that was a scripted moment. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks. I mean, you know, it's interesting. There's, you know, someone was, um, you know, I, I, I think of this movie as being, you know, very much about restorative justice and someone said, yeah, but there's no, the victim and the perpetrator are gone. You can't, it's not restorative justice if they're gone. And I, I, I don't know. I want to push back on that in the sense that, or, or maybe that's taking it too literally, or that's limiting our point of view. I, I think it's simply the effort. It's making the effort to forgive, making the effort to heal, making the effort to reconcile. You know, it's, it's, it's those intentions are restorative because they are not punitive. Those intentions are restorative because they are not retributive. Um, you're, you're not asking for retribution. You're not asking for punishment. So I'm just sort of being redundant here, but you know, you know what I mean? I, th- th- that's, that's what it means to me. Um, but I'm, uh, th- those, the, the redemption project, the forgiveness project, um, the TRC in South Africa. I mean, these are the things that I, I immerse myself in these stories, um, because in, uh, in large part, because they, they don't all in the same way. I mean, they're big critics of the TRC in Africa. I mean, even Desmond Tutu sort of, you know, admits that some of these people could have, could be re-traumatized by going in and, and, and having to sort of disclose all of this and, and, and not feeling ultimately that, that, that it was healing. It was, it was made, may, may have been worse, you know? So it's, it's incredibly complicated, but it's, look, at the end of the day, you know, I am so worried about this increasingly divided country. I'm worried about the country my daughter's growing up into. I'm obviously worried about these events and the frequency of them. But I, I, 
I feel like if there's not some effort to reconcile, if there's not some effort to sort of restore or repair these kind of broken relationships, uh, I I don't know. I I don't have a lot of hope. You know, I don't know. I don't know how we survive. I don't know. I don't know how we can move forward if we can't start to make a better effort to sort of bridge this divide. You know, it seems like it's just it's just getting further and further. Um, further and further divided as opposed to trying to trying to kind of reach some kind of common ground. So the idea of sitting down at a table in the physical presence of someone, not, you know, not online, not, not through avatars, not, you know, um, uh, being physically present and trying to work through your problems with someone that you are at odds with or feel blame towards or hate towards. I can think of nothing more extraordinary and, and, uh, necessary you know so so you know that was the story i wanted to tell and i wanted to lift up that action elevate that as as being important and that's one of the reasons we don't leave the room really you know it's just four people at a table white walls very little production design the church was a modest church it doesn't look like some concert hall you know i i i i just wanted to i just wanted to focus on that basic action that these people are trying to work through their differences the last thing I want to ask you then is: are, are you someone who do you have other scripts written that you're, or you know, are you currently working on something now that you've done this? Do you use that outlet as sort of like a catharsis to get right onto the next project, or how are you figuring out what you want to do next? So, I was trying. I was trying. I I'm. I feel like I'm still working on this. I'm. I'm. I'm so emotionally attached to this. I mean, I'm exhausted. Um, I feel like a crazy person, but I can't, I can't break away from it. It's like being in a relationship. Like I, I'm just like, not, I'm not ready to move on. Um, I do have other scripts. You know, I was working on something when this all happened and I just sort of put it aside. So, you know, I have these unfinished ideas and, you know, I've been dreaming about doing this most of my life. So I have a lot of these unfinished ideas you know, that, that never sort of made it, that I couldn't, I couldn't really get over that hump. This one I was able to, I think mostly because of this, this kind of desperation and urgency I felt around it. I felt like this is a story, it felt important. It felt like what these people are doing is extraordinary, but it shouldn't be extraordinary. We should, we should be encouraging it. It should be something that we see happen more in our society. Um, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if it would be helpful to sort of you know, make a practice of this, you know? Um, so, you know, it, 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 I, I have some, I have another idea, but I, I truly, I think I need to really be done with this one first, whatever, whatever that means. <laughs> I, yeah, don't know what I, mean, I mean, again, it just, it feels like a lot of directors either have to jump right into something else or they need time and distance. I never want to work can... again. <laughs> I literally, literally never want to work again. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's how I feel right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't imagine the emotional roller coaster and journey you must have been on with this. I mean, clearly it's something to be proud of and it must be rewarding to do, but I would imagine it's still a, a definite emotional journey. It's a lot. It is. It's a lot. It's emotional. And I need a, I definitely need a, a break. I want to be a dad and like a, a just I just want to I just want to I want those moments, you know what I mean? And and. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I, uh, we'll see, you know, I, um, I definitely have ideas, but I'm going to need a beat, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to need a spa, you know, or a uh, rehab or, you know, a mental, you know, institution or something. One of those, some, one, something will work. Something will get me energized again. <laughs>